Alex Clayton and Devin Louie and uh, two of the new stars of the Paul Taylor Company, if I can say that. <laughs> and when I went, you know, this is our first conversation together and mm -hmm. I, as members of Taylor, but I got to see you guys perform this summer mm -hmm. out at the um, Fire Island Festival. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I, I think I saw you this, I saw you last season. This is, this is your second season. This is my it? second season. Now that you've uh, kind of uh, been initiated into the <laughs> process, how's it working for you? Uh, it's great. I mean, you know, the first year is very much just like playing catch up and trying to figure out how, you know, how do they learn? How do you learn? How do you take class? And, you know, this year everything seems much more settled. There are recognizable patterns that I can do and uh, it just is sitting physically better in my body uh, and it feels easier to uh, accomplish and then to add the artist, uh, the artistry on top of it. This is your debut season, isn't it? It's a, yeah. So you, you had, you heard what Alex had to say. How is that working for you then, in comparison to that kind of thing? Um, kind of the same. I've kind of been like forced to uh, adapt sooner than later. You know, like, especially going through a, a very large transition. You know, with false passing and everything, I have to, you know, in a, in a sense, like pick up the slack sooner or later. <laughs> so, in this season, what can we look forward to seeing with Alex that you're excited about? Uh, I'm a very high energy person, and I am very excited for Syzygy. I mean, the entire dance is just wiggly and noodly and just really a test of how much energy you feel like you have and if you have it to give let's see it yeah it feels like an explosion <laughs> now what you know, when we we're at fire island what work mm -hmm. did what work did you guys do you did an excerpt from sunset, sunset. yes yes mm -hmm. and what was so nice about that first of all you got a chance to show up that incredible jump. <laughs> that yes. off for days. <laughs> wow. Yes. Which is wonderful. Thank you. But you know, I, I, uh, one of the, I read something that talks about Paul Taylor and his tribute to wartime heroes mm -hmm. and the whole idea of, of war. But you know, there's always a double entendre. There's always a hidden sub-meaning mm -hmm. onto his work. And uh, how, in, in that work, Sunset, mm -hmm. how, how were you able to get the, the idea of the his it being heroic and at the same time showing all of that kind of pathos underneath that. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's just about tapping into your own story. How is your own story applicable and interjectable into this narrative? You know, all people have circumstances that they have to go through that aren't favorable, that uh, really require you to persevere, and oftentimes uh, have a dichotomy of emotions during the process. I mean, you know, you can go through something incredibly difficult and then still try to find moments of joy. And that's something that is fairly, uh, that I find synonymous with Paul Taylor's work, that I live that life. Like these, these lives that he's creating on stage, like that is something that I can very easily associate with. Actually, then the work going between the abstract mm -hmm. works and the dance narratives, because he has such a range of work. I mean, just tapping different parts of your life, you know, there are times where you do feel chaotic, where you feel like nothing is going your way, and when you have a piece that is more angular and less, you know, less structured in a story kind of sense, you know, like that type, you know, that taps into like those blind rages, or like, you know, those, you know, moments where you have so much physical energy um, that you don't quite know what to do with it. And Paul, I think, is great at tapping that and allowing you, the person, the viewer, the dancer, to then just experience that. Like, here, like, is a pure emotional response that is, like, not narrative so that you can have your own experience and it be valid. Yeah. So, in that sense, what is what do you find your biggest challenge to be this season? This season. It doesn't have to necessarily be a work. I mean, but it may be the working process or. Um, honestly, like diving into like the Taylor technique itself. Yeah, especially like me being um, someone who was like, you know, hired somewhat randomly. 
and like not really being um, familiar with the technique itself and like seeing like how in depth the technique is and then how it applies to or how he applied it and how he like really used it in every single piece that he created is like is really having to figure out how to not just necessarily like dance but like do tailor you know what I mean so I, I think that might be the biggest challenge because I can't just like do what I do Cause your background, <laughs> so your background is more from the Ailey school and yeah. from that kind of take, you know, you know Horton, yeah, Horton, Graham, Graham, yeah. And so, th so this must be a very I different know. thing. Of, yes, this must be very <laughs> different on the body, also. Uh, yeah, a little bit. Um, well, I was I was introduced to tailor technique from Carolyn Adams. I think my first summer at the Ailey school, but uh, after that, I like never really touched it again. Uh, I think at the time it wasn't really offered throughout the school year. Um, yeah, it's 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 definitely a transition. <laughs> definitely a transition. You know, it's uh, I feel like it's slightly softer on the body in certain instances than like you know your Horton techniques, or your Graham techniques. You know. Okay. And how is it changing your physique? Because usually when you think of a Taylor guy, he's got a little more oomph than your lap frame does. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I have a chest nail, so like, that's that's a thing. <laughs> I hadn't, hadn't had one in like you know, about eighteen years, and like one just popped up. So. <laughs> well, kudos to the technique. You know, yeah. like yeah, you know, the technique gave it to me. <laughs> so, what is what work are you looking forward to doing this? Uh, um, honestly, all of them, to be completely honest. Uh, and I've never. Since joining the company, I haven't had the opportunity to do as many as I'm doing right now. You know, like my first tour was China, and for a majority of China, I was just doing Piazzolla, which is my favorite tailor piece. Um, but as time went on, and I get an opportunity to showcase my talent in the studio and like show it, like I'm, I'm actually here for this. Like I can do this. I'm getting more opportunities to do a lot more things, and it's you know you really have to put on different hats with every single piece that's being put out there. And, like, I'm just I'm um, I'm excited to do it all. Like I'm ready to show the work what I can do. Because I the same thing I asked Alex. I mean there is a difference between the abstract narrative and, and then the pure movement works that he does. Absolutely. And how um, how do you find that to navigate between those two? Um. Or what things do they bring out in you? What what car what do you have to put into them to make it your own? Uh, I mean, I, I, was, I couldn't have said it any better than like, the way Alex did, but, um, you know, he really used a thesaurus on that one. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but no, like, yeah, just, just how he said it, just like really um, tapping into your own personal story for each one of those, like, narrative pieces, like a piece such as Sunset, like how, like, like I, I can't even put it into words, man, you just, like, you know, going through like a some sort of like childhood tribulation that uh brings out like depending on the piece like some sort of sadness so like you get out there and like you're really like you like the audience like everyone feels that you have like either lost something or like feel defeated in a certain way and then you go into these syzygies where it's just like okay get out there and like do not die <laughs> <laughs> you know like so you know you just, you know, just uh yeah like like i said I, couldn't have said any better. Like you really just gotta go out there and do. <laughs> well, this is the, the first time I'm really excited because this is the first time I get to interview mm -hmm. both of you. Mm -hmm. And usually, what I like to do is interview people over the course of their, their career mm -hmm. with their company, and you see how things change. Mm -hmm. You know, you yeah. see how it comes. The beginning, there's a different feeling, and then it's like you're saying after you've mastered the technique to a certain point, it changes, and then when the roles change and you move up and the responsibility changes. Mm -hmm. It changes again. Mm -hmm. So if I had to ask you one question about what are you looking forward to doing? Uh, yeah, uh, Syzygy is great, but I'm very excited for Last Look. Mm -hmm. Last Look is one of those emotional pieces that are sort of like a, um, a blanket feeling. I mean, there are uh, maybe semi-narrative uh, tropes that like you see within it, like little vignettes that you see between people. Um, however, uh, the entirety of the piece is just a an emotional um, like black. <laughs>
or read, like a very strong, prolific uh, burst. And uh, I like start the piece with this crazy, uh, please don't die solo. Crazy. Crazy, solo. please don't die that solo. That I understood. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and it's it's beautiful and it's intense and it asks, the piece asks you as a dancer to give everything that you can give. Like, what is like the deepest emotional uh, piece that you can use as an impetus physically? Like, how can you throw your body in a way to then to be able to do it again? Like, yeah. Exactly. So all that. All of that <laughs> coming your way. So in parting, I just want to add my last question is for you, Gavin. Yes. If you had to, um, what would be your idea of it if you had a chance? I mean, right now I know you're exploring. This is your first season. Mm -hmm. But you're looking at the full company and say, what do you say? I'd love to do that. that that's all I do in this isn't you. Like, I'm, like, come out the gate. Like, the first time I was told to, like, watch that video. And I watched uh, Michael Trezevic do it, and I watched um, Christopher Gillis do it. And I was like, I, I, yo, I was like, that looks like me all up and down. You know, like, like I was like, I, I don't know if it's going to come back. At that point, I was like, I don't know if, if this dance is coming back at all. But, like, I would love to do that, that particular one. Like, that would be, like, right up my alley. And you're doing and it. And now, now I'm doing it. I'm that doing it. Like, it and it's true. great. So, the, so <laughs> the audience needs to come see this this season. Yes, come see please. these two guys. The season starts on the 29th of October and goes to the 17th of November. Uh, Michelle calls it the State Theater. <laughs> 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 but it's Lincoln Center, and it's a, a grand setting to see a, an incredible company. And I want to thank you guys again for taking the time out. I hope this becomes our annual thing that I get yes. to sit down with you and talk so, about all things that Taylor. That would be amazing. Great. Love you. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you.